As we are now well into the 21st century, the record will show that for all of the new era, we have continued to be haunted by violence from the domestic quarters at home, to our schoolyards, to our streets, and our borders. In short, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, violence is threatening to destroy our paradise in the Caribbean Sea. This is not to say that we have not been struggling to cope with this truth. On the contrary, we have been. But if we are not careful, its stubbornness and metastasizing malignancy could overrun and overwhelm us. Violence in the Caribbean is a public health emergency which threatens our lives, our economies, our national security, and by extension, every aspect of our well-being. In Trinidad and Tobago, in the years 2011 to 2022, we have lost and have had to grieve for 5,439 lives, lost violent murder, largely through the use of imported firearms and ammunition. In 2011, we lost 352 lives. And by 2022, the annual count was over 600, a new record, already being challenged by the murder rate for 2023. Except for COVID in a pandemic, none of the listed dangerous diseases have taken lives like this in our population. For the thousands of wounded victims and perpetrators alike, a surgical intervention to the head costs $170,000. A surgical intervention for a chest wound would cost about $155,000. A shot to the leg requiring surgical intervention would cost approximately $100,000. And a leg shot without surgical intervention could easily cost $40,000. All of this before you leave the hospital, and that in medical care and attention. All of these are frequent daily incurred costs, and they are to be borne by taxpayers at every level from scarce revenues diverted from other more deserving productive priorities. Our current laws acknowledge a suite of afflictions, such as yellow fever, smallpox, plague, cholera, Ebola, novel coronavirus as notifiable, warranting emergency responses if even only a few cases are known to appear. Violent behavior, violent crime, violent crime involving the use of firearms, the associated individual and group mental health trauma accompanying violent behavior, so ever present amongst us now, pose a far greater destructive threat than these diseases, and on that basis alone qualifies violence as a public health emergency in our country and throughout the Caribbean.